Hey guys, uh, the Humble Southpaw here with the um, Mission First Tactical AIWB OWB Ambidextrous Holster and Graphic Holster. Uh, just before we get going into the specs and you know, just giving you my point of view on these, uh, just for disclosure, uh, Mission First Tactical did send me my graphic um, holster here with my logo on it uh, for review. The Kimber holster that came in with my uh, Mako R7. So that one is provided when you buy a, a, the range kit and all that. So just to give you full disclosure on that. Um, so let's go ahead and get going here. And so to start off with, and let me just... So they come with a... Um, these are... Boltron, Moltron, which is a thermoplastic. It's a higher grade than your Kydex. Uh, Boltron was made for uh, airline, the airline industry and automotive. It um, more resilient to uh, high temperatures and for uh, cold temperatures, hot temperatures and cold temperatures. Uh, very rigid, uh, very uh, sturdy in those um, <clears throat> manufacturing situations. So. I mean, to use a Boltron on a holster is, is a great option. I do definitely, when I see a holster made with that, I definitely look, uh, gravitate towards that. So you definitely want to look at, um, you know, holsters that are made with Boltron. Not to say that the other ones, you're going to pay a little premium price on those, but, and the other, just pure Kydex or even just a thermoplastic molding type uh, holster are, are good too, you know, just different levels of quality and all that, but they all will do a good good service to the uh, to a holster. Uh, this one here comes with a one and a half inch belt clip, as you can see on both of these. Um, they do recommend uh, their IWB to OWB paddle conversion. I did not get one of those. And also when you do use, you know, if you're changing, using the holster, changing it from a left to right-handed, or you're gonna go with the conversion, they do recommend a um, like a Loctite on the screws, just you know, with all that movement and tension and all their screws can get loose. So they do recommend that. And I'll, re I'll put down below, you know, in my description, uh, the, the Loctite I use. Uh, it's recommended by a lot of um, competition shooters, long range shooters. They say it, you know, the the other Loctite a lot of people use. It. This one will is. The holds the job, does the job, but when it's time to unscrew it, it's not as hard. You're not going to strip the screws or, or anything or the threads or anything like that. So I'll leave it down below. Um, so this also comes with, and I'll flip it on this side here. It has a cant from 0 to 15, as you can see on this one here. Let me raise it up. Uh, a little more elongated here. So you have a zero to 15 degree cant that you can do on these. Um, same thing on this one here. Uh, it does have a an audible passive retention. Let me find here. And you definitely can hear that click as you're putting it in. And both of these are set up for uh, outside the waistband. Um, I prefer carrying outside the waistband. Um, I have another holster I've been using for inside the waistband with my 365, uh, but these I tend to use outside the waistband. Now this one I need to tighten up a little bit so you don't hear that retention as much there. I need to tighten up that screw, but definitely um, both. And before we get going, both of these holsters have been, uh, both holsters, both of these guns have been checked. They are not loaded. Uh, for YouTube's sake, um, so just to be aware of that, so they are not loaded. Um, they are cut for uh, red dot red ability. Now with the 365 XL, when I when we were working on doing this holster, I was asked if I had the iron the iron sights that you lose when you put on a red dot. Or do you keep, uh, so, you know, are you, the newer versions where they do keep the iron sights and move that plate up forward a little bit. Uh, you do need, when you work with Mission First Tactical, let them know which type of sight you have. I had the ones, I have an older version, so I do lose the iron sights. Um, 
It does have a deep channel for site channels. So basically if you're running higher suppression sites, they do have, so it runs there. So, um, and again, I said, this is a quality of Boldatron. So it's definitely a nice, sturdy um, material and all that. Uh, these are molded, trimmed, assembled, and buffed by hand. So this is no machinery, it's all done by hand. Um, and you can feel it's nicely buffed, you know, no, no sharp edges around anything um, everywhere. Just definitely feels nice. Um, and they are made in USA. They are located in Pennsylvania, Horsham, Pennsylvania, and they are um, lifetime warranty. So these are definitely nice. I've been enjoying them. Um, when you wear these, I sometimes I forget I'm carrying. That's how well these are. You don't feel any tug. You don't feel anything where it's tilting up against, you know, pulling your waistband out or your belt out. So these are definitely nice. Uh, like I said, some days I'm like, oh, I got my gun on me, so the, my firearm on me. So just an excellent uh, product here. Um, I would place these kind of in, you know, price-wise in the mid-range, depending on how, what you're thinking. So low end to me would be something like $30. These run, and the funny thing is there's only a $5 difference between the graphic and the plane. It's like $54.99 for just a plane and another $5, fifty nine ninety nine to have your graphic. And they do it on both sides, uh, depending if you're left-handed, right-handed, or vice versa. Um, so this one I consider mid-range. They're about $60. Um, to me, you know, then you're going in up to about, you know, $80, $90, maybe $100, depending on, on the holster. Um, you know, and, and price doesn't always mean a better holster. You know, if you look at um, the G-Code, which is an entry-level $30 holster, you know, universal fit, fully ambidextrous, great holster for the price, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. This one kind of comes in the middle there, and, and there's a few other ones, you know, on the higher end um, I would recommend. But just so you guys see, this is a great holster, and... It's not universal, but you can order it. They have, they carry a whole uh, line of different uh, for uh, models and all that. They do a 1911 for four inch to five inch barrel. They'll do a CZ uh, P10. The Glocks they do 17, a 19, uh, the 43, the 43X, a 48. Um, they do are now coming out with the Icarus uh, frame for the X macro, so which is nice. Uh, those who are carrying an Icarus have changed out their uh, frame on their 365 to an Icarus frame. Uh, I've heard those are very nice frames. I do not own one, so but I've heard very nice. So they do have a model that will accommodate that. Uh, the Ruger, the Max 9, the LCP line, uh, the SIG, uh, the 226, the 320, and all the 365 uh, uh, variances, the X, the XL, the macro. This will also do the Shield Plus, uh, the Springfield Hellcat, the Echelon, uh, the Taurus, the G2C, the 3C, and the GX4. So they do have a variety of different um, models that they will do for you. And that's just, I didn't, that's not even an exhausted list there. So definitely highly recommend them. Uh, if you're looking for a mid range, budget friendly uh, holster, definitely would go with uh, Mission First Tactical. Um, I've been happy with it. And again, I mean, the graphic definitely looks very nice. You know, they did a, a, a mock-up for me, so I was able to see it, how it would look. And honestly, once I got it, it was even better than what I initially, you know, in the mock-up. You know, sometimes mock-ups are, you know, you can see it, but until you vi actually f visually see the product, it's, it's excellent. And um, they also did for my a couple AR-15 mags, and I'll do a review on those. But So I definitely highly recommend these guys. Uh, if you do like this uh, video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you do want to see more from, uh, videos from a Southpaw's perspective, please subscribe and definitely share. All right, guys, you be safe.